Hello everyone. Uh, today we will cover the first lab in engineering analysis uh, simulation uh, using ANSYS workbench. Uh, this is a classical problem which mainly is just you have a, a, a plate or a, a piece of metal that has a, a central hole and you are applying attention to it and the material is structural steel with sigma yield 250 megapascal and we are applying attention force 10,000 Newton and we would like to determine the stress distribution deformation distribution and the factor of safety using ANSYS workbench without further ado let's go to ANSYS as you can see to the left you have the toolbox which has all the different function or the different analysis that ANSYS can perform today only we'll concentrate on a static structure uh, so this way we're going to do just a static structure but for your knowledge that there are many other items here you will be just go uh, explore it within the ANSYS uh, uh, software so I'm going to go to the static structure the first step is to click on the static structure press the left mouse and you drag it to be in the project schematic so now I have a project schematic and I'm going to name this one lab number one, one which actually is what introduction to ANSYS introduction to, to ANSYS workbench okay as you can see there are certain steps we decide the first step to decide about what analysis you're going to use so it's number one is static structure okay now the next step is to, to choose the material what kind of material you're going to use the material the default in ANSYS is automatically a structural steel which is the same requirement we have but but if you want to change that what you can do is just you can go to the material engineering material double click on it and then you will get a, a plenty of material as you can see here we have here a structural steel but if I want to go to the library then it will open differently I can go to general material and under general material I can choose many type of material I can choose al aluminum alloy if I want to add it just a click on add and automatically it's going to be added you see added here now if I want to go to concrete or uh, gray cast iron magnesium alloy uh, silicon stainless steel just you click on the plus and it automatically will be here so so far we have aluminum alloy stainless steel structural steel and titanium alloy that's good enough now I'm going to close the engineering data uh, later I will show you how you can select if you select only one material automatically this will be the default but later we will show you also how you can choose between them and you can compare between the analysis comp between them now let's go to the geometry right click on the geometry and say import geometry and already we have it in the so or you can browse for it and you have the or you save it in your your desktop the geometry for ANSYS to use it has to be saved you can use any 3d modeling software such as SOLIDWORKS Solid Edge, Creo and so on but you have to save it in a different in a, in a format suitable to ANSYS so the format I use is, is IGS you can use IGS or a STEP uh, so I'm gonna use IGS so I choose I said now you see the check mark it means this step has been completed this step has been completed the next step is to go to the model so we'll wait till that the program will be opened and then we'll start doing the modeling so another screen will show up 
which is this screen <coughs> and we have the model so now the first step is we're going to do the mesh everything you have a check mark so everything is fine so at the mesh here I'm going to click on the mesh and then I'm going to go to under sizing click on the sizing and I'm going to use fine meshing okay and then we can say uh, update mesh generate mesh sorry so now we have the mesh meshing yeah now if you if, if you if, if if you think that this is like too much if you want to make it more uh, smaller we will talk about that in the next lab. In lab number two, we'll talk about how you can play with the meshing and you can mesh size in a way that you get the optimum solution. And after that, you can decrease the mesh to get better result, but till you reach a certain limit, decreasing the size wouldn't help. Just you will be good enough. Or if it is like within 2% error, this will be great. So now we have the mesh. And now we need to uh, do the analysis. So now I want to put the boundary condition. So now I want to see what the boundary condition. So this is a static structure. I'm going to right click on the static structure. I'm going to say insert force, tension force, force in this side. And as you can see, it is tension force in the X direction. So I'm going to say apply. So now I want to put the amount, so uh, defined by the force instead of a vector, I'm going to use component. So under component, I'm going to use X direction, and it's a positive 10,000 Newton. Enter. So now I put the force here. Now to have the results in megapascal and so on, so the way to do it, you see units, in the top left upper left top click on units and it tell you what the answer you what units you would like the answer to be displayed by so usually I use the number three this way I can have the units in megapascal yeah, okay so we have number three now I go out here so now we need to put the other boundary condition is we are fixing support from the other side so we have a tension so this automatically will be have at another tension on the other side but it's just what it is so we're going to right click and search the support insert and say that we have a fixed support so now i'm going to rotate it so i can see the other side and click this one the side apply and i'm done so now I think that's good enough. I can move it to the center if you want. That's good enough. So now, as you can see, if I have a force, you have it. This is the amount of the force. How much? Ten thousand. And the other, the fixed support in this side. So we are ready for the solution. Now we go to the solution. Right click on the solution. Insert. I need the stress. Okay. I need the stress distribution using equivalent von Mises theory. So I'm going to click on this one, go to solution again, right click, insert. I want to get the deformation, total deformation. And again, go to solution, insert. I want to use a stress tool, maximum tensile stress. So I'm going to use the maximum tensile stress to determine the uh, safety factor. So maximum tensile strength and after underneath that you will see that the safety factor so we are ready to perform the analysis so we'll go to now the next step is to go to solve so as you can see solve here in the top upper top so click on solve and wait till the program execute the results once i see the check marks mean everything went fine so now we can see the results. 
I have the stress distribution and the maximum stress I have is 184 megapascal. So the units here, megapascal. And also if I want to know where is the location of the maximum stress, so you know if it's gonna fail, it's gonna fail where. So you click on the maximum, it tell me that the maximum stress at this location, which we known from the strength of material class. And also, if I would like to know where is the minimum, in certain situation, maybe we'd like to know the minimum, but maybe the minimum deformation, minimum something else. Okay. But if you want to get the minimum too, so you can look for the minimum somewhere. Okay. So we can have maximum and minimum. Now the deformation, as you can see, here is the deformation uh, distribution. And the maximum deformation in our case is what? Uh, 0 0.031 of a millimeter like almost 31 micron okay based on this load this is a maximum deformation you have. Uh, okay so now the next step is to know what is the safety factor as you can see here the safety factor is the minimum safety factor is 1.35 1.35 it's considered safe but actually in real practice it's usually two is a good number so but we can say now later we can discuss the safety factor what required for safety factors and so on this will depend on the design analysis itself and the, the designer he's designing the equipment for what if it is safety of, uh, of human being involved the safety factor will be completely different like safety factor for elevator is different from safety factor for anything else for a chair for example okay so now this will end up our uh, analysis and all what we need to do is just get the report so we have the solution the stress distribution maximum stress 184 megapascal the total deformation is available you can summarize that the maximum deformation happened at, at the edge here which is about 31 micron yeah 31 micro and the safety factor is 1.3568 we can if you want to improve that if whatever the application you can do that okay so if you want to also do some animation to see how the, the 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 load when you start applying the load how it looks so maybe you can have here you see you can apply whatever i want to see how is the stress is this when you start applying the load from zero till the maximum load so you can have it here as an animation here. You can click in the animation so you can see that. Now, if this is too fast, you can control the the, the time. So instead of using two second, uh, two point five second, two second, this is the automatic uh, that should the default. So I can make it four second. Now it's going to be slower, or I can make it in a ten second. And you will find that in the internet, there are many free software that allow you to develop a video animation of the stress distribution. You can you know, capture this as a video, and there are many software that are available uh, on the internet. You can download them and use them to capture the video. Okay, so what else? I believe that this will do the lab for today, and uh, we will uh, cover more material in the next uh, in the following labs thanks for watching i would like to hear your feedback and if you like the video please subscribe to the channel click the bell and give it a thumb up have a wonderful day bye bye